This week we focus on building your first food anchor, and that food is protein. Protein is actually a macronutrient, and I'm going to break down all the nerdy science of what protein is in the next couple of videos. So let's focus on the three steps needed to start rebuilding your health or kickstart your fat loss. Step one is education. We're gonna identify the current proteins in your diet using the Protein Master Cheat Sheet. If you don't know what a protein is, don't worry, we go over it. Step two, application. We're gonna eat a palm of protein at every snack or meal. Step three is connection. We're gonna connect with your coach on the biofeedback, AKA the signals that are changing in your body from changing your habits. Now, with those three steps outlined, let me show you exactly what to do, how to do it, and what to expect as you build your palm of protein anchor. Now, most things are gonna file into a couple different buckets. The first one is animal protein. So right here, I have some chicken cubes, swordfish, eggs, beef, basically the animal and dairy section. All right, this would constitute what I call portable proteins. This is a protein bar. These are delicious. Um, most of these things, anything that's 24 grams and 42. Uh, if we look at the back, the sugars are really low. They're 12. My rule of thumb is that if the protein is double than the carbs, you're in good shape, which means the protein here is 30 and the carbs are 12. This is a pretty good drink. Uh, we have our nuts and we have some high powered yogurts. Okay, so high power really means is, is high grams or high protein. This one by Oikos has 20 grams per serving. Most of you guys are gonna shoot between 20 and 40 grams. Protein enhancements, egg whites, um, anything that has added silk, this makes a great one. Added protein. Ever if you wanna look at how to read a label, look at the back and where it says proteins. I circled every single one of these so you guys can kinda see it. Um, these, this is a great morning option, Kodiak cakes. Um, a little high in the grams of carbs, but we can get to that later. This is a great option. Obviously protein, some egg whites. Now for the plant-based people, okay? Probably the highest amount of protein stuff they're gonna go with is shelled edamame. At, at coming in at 10 grams for a cup, that's pretty good. Uh, next we go into green peas are coming in at four grams, okay? Uh, broccoli's a little bit lower. Spinach is three grams. Okay, you guys see that? Broccoli is heading in at two grams, okay? And then Impossible Burgers, case of burger option. These are coming in at 20 grams. All right, what to do this week? So we are going to clearly start to identify what proteins are on our plate or what's in front of us. So the best thing that we can do, number one, is start to pause and ask myself, do I even know what a protein is? If you don't, use the Protein Master Cheat Sheet or you can look at my fitness pal and it has proteins and you can start to look at the protein content, but to keep it easy, use the Protein Master Cheat Sheet. It even breaks up into different sources of dairy, animals, plant-based vegetables, really starting to educate yourself on the process. Number two we're, what, is we're going to be looking and assessing, am I eating enough? And to, for starters, we're gonna start at a palm unless given other directions where it's more than that. For now, just eating, believe me, eating a palm, really eyeballing that up, eating a palm. So this would constitute a palm, not a fist, a palm of protein at every single serving or meal that you eat. Now, what I like to do is I'm gonna teach you something called POP, which is the prioritization of protein, which means when we do eat a POM, we're gonna actually prioritize it by eating that first. So I'm gonna show you what that is on the next video, but for right now, if you have a, a plate of, I don't know, the most boring meal ever, chicken, broccoli, and rice, I'm gonna actually eat my chicken first. If I have cottage cheese and fruit, I'm gonna eat my cottage cheese fruit, my cottage cheese first. So the key is, is we're actually going to prioritize protein as a palm. So we're gonna prioritize a palm of protein, the pop method, all right? Now, what's really cool is number three, we're gonna develop this skill of education and application of protein, which is really unique. Now, I stated a little bit earlier that we are gonna be using my fitness pal if you wanna use it. If you're averse to that, if that triggers anything from previous tracking or uh, diets, please understand that when we are tracking in this system, we are only gonna be tracking the macronutrients, and a macronutrient 
is a form of energy and it's protein, carbs, and fats. And right now the macronutrient, the macro we're focusing on is protein. So at some point in the program, you are going to be responsible for understanding your energy balance, which is really how much protein you're taking in. So it might be a good idea, not right away, I would say to start with a palm and then eventually in a couple days or a week to start seeing how much that palm is of protein, which would involve you taking it and weighing it and measuring it just once, not for the rest of your life, but just like your finances, you need to understand the ins and the outs of what's going in your body, all right? If you're in debt, you'll never get out of debt without doing an assessment of understanding how much you're spending versus how much you're saving. This is the same thing. You don't have to be neurotic and write it all down for the rest of your life. You do have to understand the common proteins that you're eating. Don't get swordfish at six ounces when you never eat that shit. Just take the stuff that you're currently eating. So don't change your, your eating habits. Just start to take inventory of what you're currently taking in today by using so start understanding what types of proteins you're eating are you eating a palm and that's really what exactly you're going to do now i'm going to show you and jump into my kitchen and show you exactly how we break that down as you go about your eating you're going to do two things you're going to start identifying and start to become aware look at your meal so most people start off their day maybe with a bowl of oatmeal or a cereal or a breakfast sandwich or, so, or like some sort of shake if you have an empty shake, add some protein in it. So if we're protein every single day, this is not protein, really. Oatmeal is predominantly a carbohydrate. So you use the master cheat sheet, and what I'm gonna do is try to eat a fist of protein with that. So a fist, how we actually do it, this is my place, you hover it over, this is about two fists. Now, what I kinda do is trying to go with the girth amount, right, you don't have to be that high, but what we're trying to do is, if I ate this by itself, this wouldn't be popped. This doesn't have the presence of protein. It doesn't have anything on that master protein list. So I'd have to eat this together. Now that might be a lot of volume to food. Now with pop, the presence of protein, you're also prioritizing protein, which means that's gonna be the first thing that you eat on your plate. So let's kind of whoop, rewind everything. Number one, identify your protein sources. That might take you a week. So depending on where you are in the program, you're gonna start identifying. If you're in the protein awareness stage, all you're gonna do is start to look at your foods and start to get the presence of protein. So you're like, oh, I'm just eating oatmeal. I should add something to that. Maybe eggs are gross for you. Add a scoop of protein or maybe switch over and try something different, okay? If you're having a regular breakfast sandwich, maybe try throwing an extra egg on top of there. Again, the presence of protein, prioritizing protein. Get down to the brass tacks of why we're focusing on protein. So this is the first time we're going to talk and clarify on what macronutrients are and why this specific macronutrient, protein, is prioritized in our quest for vitality, long-term weight management, and what everybody wants, fat loss. Now, macronutrients contain the nutrient components our bodies need in large amounts to function optimally and to maintain its system and structures. The three macronutrients or macros include protein, carbohydrates, and fats. The reason we are focusing on protein and specifically eating more of it, like a palm at every meal, is that studies have shown that high protein diets cause more fat loss compared to normal lower protein diet diets when calories are equal. Now, the four things that I'm gonna highlight is reducing hunger, reducing cravings, speeding up metabolism, increasing fat burning, how protein supports our structure and heals us from injury. So let's start with number one, reducing hunger signaling. Now, protein is a natural appetite suppressant, and this is a result of an improvement of two weight regulating hormones, ghrelin and peptide YY. Just imagine peptide in two Ys. The increased protein consumption reduces ghrelin, which is really a signal that says, hey, it's time to eat. And what happens is over time, as we eat more protein, this lowers the levels of ghrelin, indicating less hunger signals. And less hunger signals means you're not gonna be probably eating as much. So overall, you kind of eat less calories. 
So number two is talking about peptide YY. This is really our satiety. Remember, hunger and satiety are two different things. Hunger is a signal that's saying, hey, it's time to eat, and satiety is your fullness. Peptide YY, what happens is it's eating more protein is going to increase your ability. It's going to speed up how quickly you feel full. So the signal going from your brain, from your gut, these both of these are made inside of the gut, say, hey, we're fuller faster. So not only are you reducing your signal for food, when you actually eat, you're getting full faster. It's pr pretty awesome. Now, number two is we're going to talk about boosting metabolism. That's a, a word that's thorough thrown around a lot in like magazine covers. I'm going to break down the science of that right now. Now we boost, boost metabolism is actually using what's called TEF, the thermic effect of mood, food. And that's really a measurement of how energy in the body uses to process foods. And those food processes include digestion, assimilation, transportation, and the utilization of nutrients for energy. The EF or the thermic effect of food, well, each macronutrient goes through a different metabolic process in your body in order to be broken down and used for energy. Now this part is really cool. Remember, food is chemical bonds. The body has numerous processes and pathways which how it takes this and pulls these chemical bonds apart. And some of these medical processes are more efficient than others. The more efficient a process is, at breaking down these chemical bonds that are in food, the more of the food energy is used or stored. The less efficient, the more energy or calories are lost as heat. So basically, the higher the thermic effect of food is, the less efficient the process, the more energy it takes to metabolize that food, the more heat is generated, or calories are burned in the process. That is pretty significant. So if your goal is fat loss, this is the most important part is your thermic effect of food. Now, protein is very difficult to break down, digest, and utilize. So when we look at these three macros, it takes about 20 to 30% of my energy to break down a piece of chicken. Uh, for carbs, it's much less. I think it's between six and 10% in fat, it's like 3%. So therefore, protein requires much more energy to metabolize than fats and carbs. Put simply, the higher the protein content of food you're eating, the more of a metabolic advantage you will have. So if you kind of look at that as a numbers game, if I took it, um, let's say a piece of chicken, it's 100 calories, well, it's going to take about 30 calories to break that down, so I'm going to be left with a net of 70. Now, a piece of bread, it's pretty easy to break down, so it's, it's efficient, which means I'm going to be left with, let's say that bread is 100 calories, and about 6 to 10% of its use, I'm going to be left with 90, way more calories. Fat is incredibly... Uh, 3%, so you're gonna, if I had 100 calories from like an avocado per se, 97. So as you can see, fat has the most, then carbs, then protein, all right? So that's the really important thing you need to understand is the thermic effect of these foods. The more protein, that's why sometimes, I'll talk this in the next video, is that you might feel your temperature increase when you eat more protein. People talk about the meat sweats, it's kind of a real thing. All right, so let's bounce into three and four. So I just briefly went over boost metabolism, and another way that happens is that uh, protein also increases total energy expenditure for the day by probably 10%, which again is massive. So let's say I'm burning about 3,000 calories a day, and if 10%, an extra 300 calories over time, remember, to lose a pound of fat is 3,500 calories. So just by me eating more protein in two weeks, I can roughly pull off of a, a piece of fat by the math itself, which I'll kind of break down on my whiteboard in a second here. All right, so that's really going over boosting metabolism. Now, number three and four that are key significance. Number three, protein repair. Protein can help your body repair after it has been injured. And this kind of makes perfect sense as it protein forms the main building blocks 
other tissues and organs. So collagen has been really popular in the past couple of years. Collagen is a protein responsible for your healthy joints, skin elasticity, stretchiness, it's in your bones, muscles, blood, compromising three quarters of your skin and a third of the protein in your body. So as you age, and I'm about to turn 40, your existing collagen breaks down and it gets harder for your body to produce more. Numerous studies demonstrate that eating more protein after an injury can help speed up and accelerate the recovery of an injury. So that's incredibly important when we're talking about health and well-being. Now, last but not least is going into four, improving immunity pro profiles. A lot of antibodies are made in the gut itself, and that is a place where uh, when, when actually an, a virus comes into the body, the antibodies are made mostly prim primarily in the gut as a natural protection and then those antibodies are formed. So the more protein that is available, it can help you, one, uh, prevent a incoming uh, virus or bacteria. Uh, and number two, it can, it can help you defend it or recover from sickness faster. So those are the top four reasons that we are mainly prioritizing protein because out of the three macronutrients, one, it's the one that we typically eat a little bit more of, but most importantly, it's hitting the main key reasons of why people come into a health journey. It's for overall health, it's for vitality, it is for, of course, people do want to build muscle and burn fat. I didn't even go into the muscle building because it would take me an entire another video, but key is it really hits health and fat loss and well-being all in one by just starting to work on that palm of protein starts to build that beautiful habit of becoming healthy, improving vitality, and most importantly, it's probably the easiest thing to do because you're already kind of eating protein, you're probably just not eating at enough per meal. All right, what to expect this week? So the first thing that you're gonna really notice is a reduction in appetite. As explained in the other videos, you know why this is happening. So you're just not going to feel as hungry all the time. You're also going to experience a reduction in cravings. So big two things right off the bat is cravings primarily probably for sugars are going to reduce an overall appetite. So the amount that you eat will start to go down. So those are two big wins right off the bat. Appetite, cravings, down. Number three, you're probably gonna start to experience a little bit more energy, probably throughout the day, or you're probably gonna notice it most when you do have typical energy slumps. For me, that's usually between like two and four. When my protein profile is nice and high, I really don't have energy dips, which is pretty cool. Number three, you're going to probably say this, man, I feel like it's kind of hard eating all this protein. So you might start to experience a little resistance uh, just eating the things. Because again, with the thermic effect of food, it's much harder to break down, digest, and utilize these nutrients because of their deep chemical bonds. Uh, some other things that are maybe not the best topics to talk about, but they're incredibly necessary, is to talk about the change in your bowel movements and temperature. So your bowel movements might be a little bit slower or more active or more in their amount. So just keep a key, because remember, you are changing your nutrient uh, your macronutrient profile. So anytime we change anything, there's going to be, again, a change in digestion, digestion, utilization, transportation of those materials, and what it's gonna look like and feel like. You may even experience some low distension of bloating. I'm not sure because every single person and human is incredibly different, and you're going to experience different things at different times, so just keep an eye on that. Uh, temperature, we talk about the meat sweat sometimes. So there is, for some people, I'm one of these people, uh, when we start to eat more protein in general, there is a, a the, one of the chemical bonds that creates lots of energy. And that might come off of you is you might have an elevation of temperature. You might not have any temperature change at all. Again, I always kind of bounce back to the big old N equals one, which means every single person is very different and we are different at multiple phases of our lives. So just keep a note on that. Uh, and a, a huge one is you might have a, a, a mood shift. This is also incredibly important due to the gut brain axis and that serotonin and dopamine. Remember, a lot of our neurotransmitters are inside of our gut. 
and a lot of the protein enzymatic uh, interactions are in the gut. So if our gut profile starts to improve and we're getting moving maybe some old excess back, bad bacteria out, we're improving good bacteria, we're improving digestion, you may well experience a mood shift. So those are all of the body mind expectations that you might go through this week. So just take it easy, keep up, and we call these um, interactions biofeedback. That's the feedback that we're starting to learn. And I could always call it being your own tuning fork. So try to be a tuning fork and start to read the signals that are coming in your body. Start to understand body temperature, just basic uh, health measurements of how we are in our space and how we interact with our food.